So uh, we left off talking about uh, resistance uh, re that's related to emissivity of the surface. So remember, we're, we're talking about the uh, radiation exchange between diffuse gray surfaces. That brings into um, reality the fact that you have this irradiation, G, coming in. And then you have something that's maybe reflected off. That's rho times G. And then you have uh, the emitted power from the surface as uh, epsilon times EB, the black body emissive power. The sum of those two things is the radiosity. So when we're talking about um, looking at the relationship between the temperature of the surface and the power that's leaving that surface, we have to account for the fact that the, all the power leaving the surface is not necessarily coming from emission. So that's where, where radiosity comes from. And we have um, this relationship uh, for surface resistance that comes from just the fact that the emissivity is an impedance to heat transfer. So we have these definitions, and then we went through and um, wrote a rate equation that said Q dot is equal to, um, when we're looking at a, a surface, it's re related to the emissivity in the area times some potential. And the potential, um, and this is now sort of um, an abstract concept. Like you can think of the temperature of a surface, you could touch a surface and feel it. Or you can think of um, a, a lot of other things that we've talked about in the class that have like a real physical analog. Here, this is really just kind of a, it's like uncomfortably abstract. You have a surface and then at some magical point you're saying there's a difference in potential. So don't get hung up on that, it's just a useful idea. But the idea is that you have a black body that's related to the temperature, this EB, and then you have the J and that's related to the energy leaving the surface and those can be different. So it's just, that's where it's coming from. Um, so okay, we, we've gotten this far. Um, what we want to do today is I guess go through an example of how you would put this into practice. So we'll do that, and then uh, the next thing would be talking about, instead of just a single emissivity, looking at breaking the emissivity up into bands. Um, so let's, uh, let's go into an example. Um, to get to that example, let's think about a three-body problem, and, or a three-surface problem, and, and what we need to actually represent the equations for, uh, for this type of a system. So this is, I guess, kind of what we had before. We had this triangle, and I drew it not as nicely as this, but um, in this triangle, you have um, three surfaces. They're all interacting with each other. They can all see each other. Um, let's say that <coughs> surface one is down here, uh, surface two is, is up here, and surface three is here. And so each of those surfaces are going to have potentially heat flowing across them um, into or out of um, the, the system. There is a potential for reflection by each surface. Now we have emissivities. Before we just had black bodies. The emissivities allow for reflection. Um, and so you have this uh, irradiation coming in, and then you have you know, stuff that's leaving potentially as, as reflection. So what's leaving the surface is going to be the reflection plus the emitted uh, power by that surface. Okay, so that's fine. So we've already kind of talked about that. Let's uh, remember how we represented this, though. We said. Um, this can be represented with a resistance network, and that resistance network looks something like, uh, I guess if we had it as, uh, sorry, I need to give myself a little bit more room here. So let's say we have a, uh, a three-node resistance network, and we said between each of these nodes there's some geometric resistance like this. Um, so this would be, uh, let's make it consistent. So this is up here. Uh, we said this this node was EB2. Uh, whatever here we have EB3. And then down here we had EB1. And then these uh, geometric resistances were RG, let's say 2, 3, RG, 3, 1, RG, 2, 1 here. Um, and then you have potentially heat flowing in, in or out of each of these nodes. So um, this, is all, this is all fine, but actually what we need to do now is introduce the, the extra resistance that's associated with the surface. Um, none of these geometric resistances capture the emissivity, right? These are all resistances related to how much one surface sees of the other, the view factor times the area. So we need to actually modify this thing to uh, account for the surface resistance. So what would that look like? I guess let's, let's start um, here on surface one. So I'm going to say that there's some impedance for heat flow that has to be between 
the thing that's interacting with the other surfaces, um, and the temperature of the, of, the, of the body itself. So actually, I need to, we'll do a little erasing or redirecting here, but EB1 actually gets moved, right? So EB1 <coughs> is going to be here. That's the emissive uh, black body power for surface one. There's then a surface resistance between this thing, this effectively this temperature, and the interaction with the other surfaces, right? This is our surface resistance here. This up here, this node becomes uh, the other end of that potential, which is the radiosity, J1. And so this is uh, R S1. All right, so that's the case for one. All three of these surfaces have emissivities associated with them. Um, so we need to do that for all three of them. So you get this um, kind of triangular setup here. I'll just erase this stuff. Three. Like this. So we had uh, EB2 up here, J2 at this node, EB3 up here, J3 at this node, and then this would be uh, R. S3, R, S2, and then we have the heat flows going across each of these potentially. So Q dot 2, Q dot 3, Q dot 1. So, okay, this is um, increasingly complicated. Uh, we have three surfaces, all three can interact with each other. Now we've got surface resistances involved. But actually, when it comes to analyzing it, it's not terribly bad. Like, it's not too bad. You could, come, you could write an energy balance, say, for each of the J nodes, um, come up with a, a set of equations, solve, that, solve those equations. That's what we'll do. Um, it's easy to draw this out, I guess, for three nodes, because every interaction is accounted for. If we started going to, say, four nodes or five nodes, um, every surface has to interact. So it just everything will start crossing. And it's not really clear. Uh, it, it's not useful to do that, we'll say. It doesn't help you visualize anything. It's like thinking about four-dimensional or five-dimensional space. It's sort of a nonsensical thing. We aren't wired to do that. Um, but at least we can write the math that goes with it, and that'll help us solve it. So if we can do it for three, write out the math, solve the set for three, then we can extend it to higher uh, numbers of surfaces. But at least you can kind of see conceptually what's going on here. Um, Maybe a quick note on some nomenclature or, uh, or numbering, I guess. I'm talking about these different heat flows, Q1, 2, and 3. That is the heat flow that goes across the surface. right? So heat flow Q1 goes from EB1 to J1. Once it gets past J1, it splits, potentially. Um, or you could have you know, heat flow like this or whatever. So if we're talking about Q1, it's across the surface, if we say Q dot say 1, 2, or Q dot 1, 3, that would just be corresponding to the component going across these resistances. So um, maybe keep track of the fact that the two index Q dots are going to be different for a summation, or, or, or fractions of, of the summation of the single index, right? So Q dot 1 would be um, comprised of Q dot 2, 1, Q dot 3, 1. That would be the total radiator. Yep. So if you do, if you look at the component here and the component here, um, they would add up to this component here. Right? There's just that's because of the energy balance, and that would be the total radiation across or into the surface, leaving or, or coming to the surface. Um, Let's see, yeah, so you, the, the energy balance on the system would have to all sum to zero if the, the temperature's not changing or something like that. That's right. Yep. OK, other questions? OK, so let's, let's write out some equations for this. Um, let's pick maybe one node and then write the equations for one node, and we'll see how it extends. So first, let's look at. Um, uh, well, let's just do this for node for node i. So this is one node in this network, and one, two, or three. Um, let's write out the resistance network. So that would be going from uh, E B i across the surface resistance 
to ji. And then from ji, we have to, to account for all the possible other surfaces. So for this three body one, it's not too bad. You know, you have um, a resistance to uh, j1, uh, say j, j2. Uh, if we had n surfaces, it'd just keep going out to, say, j, n. Um, each of these are going to be the geometric RG1, RG, or sorry, like RGI1, RGI2, RGIN. So, um, yeah, I guess keeping track of the fact that uh, stuff that's easy to, easy to mess up would be we have our potential here, EB1 is isolated from the other stuff. The J's all see each other, right? The J's are what are interacting. Uh, if we then wanted to look at like heat flow across one, you'd have another resistance here if that had an emissivity. So emissivity for, for surface one. Um, but for a single node, this is the case. And then you have, I guess, what, Q? Uh, across this, you'd have Q dot for surface I. Um, what, oh, I missed labeling the surface resistance, R, S, for I. OK, so we can write out a set of equations for this. I guess remember before, um, we had the EBs directly interacting. So we, in terms of the number of unknowns, we have uh, EBs, which are basically temperature. Right? So the temperatures were unknown, and heat flows were unknown. We had two N unknowns in our system. Now we have uh, separated EB and J. So we have uh, introduced this extra set N of um, J. Right? We have n j variables that we have to account for. So we have three n unknowns. So we have to have three n equations to solve the problem. So it remains true that we still need our boundary conditions. That's one n. Um, we're going to have an energy balance. We have to introduce another energy balance. So that looks like like this. So let's first do the um, let's first do this piece over here. Uh, how am I going to fit this all in? So just kind of make room over here. Um, so the first piece would be, let's look at q dot i across that surface. So q dot i would be equal to uh, e b i minus j i over r s i, um, which is, in terms of the emissivity, equal to epsilon i a i over 1 minus epsilon i. Remember, that's the surface resistance, times um, e b i minus j i, e b i minus j i. OK, so that's for each i. So that'd be for i equals, um, equals 1 to n. So that's going to give you n equations for each, each i index. So OK, we have that's 1n. Again, we have our boundary conditions. That's 2n. The 3n is going to be another energy balance. But that energy balance has to be um, looking at the, the radiosity part of it. So let's do an energy balance here. And that's going to include everything um, that it's seeing. So that would look like um, the following. So that would be q dot i would equal uh, the sum for, for j equals 1 to n of uh, radiosity j i minus j j over r i j. OK, so that's. Um, let's see if I can fit this in. Sorry, it's a little crowded, but that becomes just writing it a little bit more explicitly is a i summation uh, j equals one to n uh, f i j j i minus j j uh, four i equals one to n. All right, so you kind of see what what we're doing here. We're just saying that same heat flow, that same heat flow that's going across this surface has to be shared among all these branches. So by sharing it, we're just saying, OK, go ahead and sum view factor times area times the radiosity uh, potential for each of those. OK, so 1n, 2n, and then the boundary conditions that, that you want to enforce. 